Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Forex Technical Analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back. I just want to say that the uh, the Forex pairs are timestamped in the description box below also with accompanied charts and um, we'll get into the fundamentals and sentiment before we get into the technicals so um this week ahead trading economics um we got the final estimate of us fourth quarter gdp growth uh, which will keenly be watched alongside the foreign trade personal income and outlays uh, housing data and current account i'd probably say obviously gdp um is uh, definitely important um elsewhere important releases include uk final fourth quarter gdp growth um Germany consumer and business morale inflation retail trade and unemployment <clears throat> I think when it comes to Britain and and Europe I don't think the data is really going to be watched so much it's going to be all pretty much sentiment based and based on Brexit um, is there going to be an extension or is there going to you know um, to, to article 50 or uh, you know what's going to happen with the uh, parliamentary vote uh, next week as well so um i think that's pretty much what's on the cards um data dependent i, I, I doubt data is really going to move the markets um well, we've got japanese industrial output retail sales and jobless rates um and china nbs pmi so i think out of these the main ones are going to be the uh, gdp growth for the us and um, really just uh, Brexit sentiment and seeing what happens. And if you want to understand about um, fundamentals and risk sentiment, um, have a, a course, a fundamental analysis course. The link is in the description box below. It takes you to this page and uh, basically I go over why fundamental analysis, GDP, interest rates, inflation. I also give you a fundamental analysis spreadsheet where I give my uh, fundamental bias on the pairs that I'm buying or selling. This does not include risk sentiment. So for example, this week I took a trade, bought the uh, Japanese yen because there was risk off sentiment regarding, um, you know, again, Brexit and uh, and Europe. Um, just because I'm bearish here from a fundamental perspective doesn't mean I won't buy the Japanese yen if there is risk off coming into the market and that's all explained in the course so getting on to the technicals now um we start off on the dow jones dollar index and dow jones dollar index this week um we'll say last week we had um the fomc minutes the fed was quite dovish which did um uh, cause a bit of uh, um, I suppose downward pressure you can call it downward pressure on the Dow on, on the dollar and the Dow Jones dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the um, euro yen and British pound and I think the Australian dollar as well and uh, what we had this week was pretty much this <clears throat> waited for the news to come out I think that was Wednesday 20th of March and then um, immediately kind of went back up and then really kind of just went sideways um, from really the beginning of the week when you think about it so we were at 12.195 and then ended the week um, 12.190 so um, had an up and down movement Fed is dovish on um, holding interest rates um, when it comes to you know hiking taking hikes off the table anyway so they're not looking to hike at probably any time this year whereas previously they said that they would be hiking i think it was twice anyway um but that was coming if you understand interest rates and inflation and the gdp cycle you know i was saying to you know the traders that i mentor that that's pretty much what was going to happen um so uh wasn't really a surprise um i think a lot of people ended up getting short and ended up getting caught in their positions though um because even though the the, the fed is Dovish, um, when you think about the risk sentiment and uh, the dollar is still the, uh, the, 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 really the, the currency to buy when it, you know, when you compare it from a GDP and interest rate, um, perspective, um, and inflation perspective is still the best currency to buy. So, um, even though you get, you know, sell-offs, um, in the dollar, um, just look at that as buying opportunities, which is basically what, um, you know, I did. Uh, this week um, on the euro dollar 
as well end up getting a nicer buying opportunity i'm still in that trade but i'll go over that later so <clears throat> um dollar basically weakness then a bit of strength and now we're back to where we are so what are we looking at for this week um probably uh depends on obviously your bias but if you're looking at selling the dollar then you're waiting for obviously trade um price to come up into any of you know these uh these supply zones if you're looking to buy the dollar um <clears throat> i think we've spiked through that <coughs> sorry excuse me we've gone through that uh that 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 trend line um support and um i don't think it's necessary anymore i would probably say we've touched this level um once twice is okay so if prices do come back down to here probably the lower end then look for obviously some some buying um to come in and then that will add to the confluence of buying the dollar as this is the dow jones dollar index so we're just looking for confluence really when we take any dollar trades so if it starts to sell off when it comes up to supply then you can pretty much look to sell on the dollar yen or dollar swiss dollar cad etc and if we're looking down here obviously looking to buy looking for any bullish price action to add to the confluence obviously the better level would be down here um but for now i pretty think that the dollars probably depending on what happens with gdp obviously but if gdp comes out as expected then um again the dollar is still the uh, number one currency in my opinion um to buy even if price doesn't necessarily reflect that in the short term right so uh if you get a sell-off doesn't really matter for me i'll still be a buyer um and again it that just depends on obviously some data and obviously sentiment as well um euro sentiment and pound sentiment so now moving on to the um dollar yen and the dollar yen this week again risk off sentiment came in so we came pushed back up to the supply zone risk off sentiment the, the yen is a beneficiary of risk off sentiment and then we have obviously prices fall away um so if you go to the charts you'll be able to see obviously what's happened and let's see if we can clean up the chart a little bit so that can come off that can come off and i think that's going to be our supply zone use that as supply um and we'll take off this horizontal um, support as well so what you're looking for if you're looking to get short on this currency pair uh if you're waiting for a pullback if you're looking to get long matter of fact now maybe a decent time but you'd have to probably wait for risk on to come back into the market right so you may get a lower time frame trade so if you zoom down into the you know the four hour which is my time frame if you go down even lower to maybe the one hour two hour 30 minute depending on what time frame you do trade um this is where we look for trades um personally i'm not too keen on this currency pair simply because of risk off at the moment and the lead up to uh brexit but if you are looking to sell this currency pair then you'd be waiting for price to kind of pull back into this level and then sell there um, if we do continue to get risk off coming to the market then these are going to be the next areas potentially to buy once risk price come here and then maybe some risk off sentiment but if we do get any surprises and shocks with brexit um then you can probably expect the uh the yen to rally um moving on to the dollar swiss and the dollar swiss again um the swiss being a safe haven currency we get obviously some um some uh, bearish price action against the uh the dollar um i'm bullish on this on this currency pair um but not just yet need for risk to come back on before i look for any type of buy trades um let's look at the uh the price chart and see what's on offer so uh, we can delete probably this demand zone here probably expect prices to you know come down a bit more risk off sentiment being in the market this week um 
of course you could take a cheeky little trade if you wanted to it's at a decent level um and see what happens but i wouldn't risk you know full position sizes might be like a quarter position or even a half position but a full position when risk is off <coughs> with this currency pair isn't necessarily the smartest thing to do you know not a full position anyway but um yeah, so I've been waiting for price to really come down to this area here or this area here before looking to get long from a supply perspective. We do have some hidden supply right here. So um, if you're looking for a pullback to get short, then there is your um, there are your options. Moving on to the dollar CAD. The dollar CAD, um, the US dollar gaining in strength. The US dollar is um, can be a risk off currency, especially against uh, commodity type currencies like the CAD, the New Zealand dollar, as well as the um, the Australian dollar. But when it comes to uh, you know safe haven assets like the yen and the Swiss, then it doesn't perform as well. So. Um, this week there really wasn't any for me anyway any trading opportunities um, pretty much prices went sideways for a little bit and then they were on their way up but they haven't really produced a really strong area of demand yet and it's coming up into this supply zone so if we're looking at the charts um, I mean this is demand this is demand right but for this to be a really strong area of demand it would really have to make um a higher high um it's tradable if prices do come back down as prices have moved probably about you know a hundred or a hundred or so pips over a hundred pips so it is tradable i will put this level here but just keep in mind that it's not the strongest level of demand until it makes higher highs right we do did have this bit of a push up so we need to break past this level before this becomes a strong, or what I would consider a strong level of demand. If prices do come up to the supply zone and you want to get short and you the dollar, you want to buy the Canadian dollar, then this is going to be the first area to look for buy trades. If not, then we've got you know this area all the way up here to look for um, sell trades. And when I say buy trades, I'm talking about buy trades for the Canadian dollar. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And New Zealand dollar has actually been performing quite well. Um, it's good fundamentally, um, probably second or third on, 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 on the list. Um, again, the uh, dovish sentiment with the, uh, the US dollar did push uh, prices higher as well as um, expected GDP um, I think it was 0 0.6 uh, month on month for the New Zealand dollar so it's doing quite well from an economic perspective um, so uh, yeah but again dollar strength coming into the market now is this a reversal or is this profit taking not too sure when you've got two competing strong currencies um, you're probably more likely to get what is known as a ranging market um, to well, a strong versus a weak currency, you'll get a trending market. So, um, two strong currencies. This is a bit, uh, don't know whether this is gonna reverse, but you never know. The dollar being number one at the moment, um, anything can happen. But, um, if you are looking to get short, then now is pretty much the opportunity. If you trade, you know, the, uh, the daily time frame chart, if you're looking at a lower time frame. Um, you'd probably be looking for prices to kind of come back up, you know, to this level. I don't know, some sort of double top. Um, personally, probably a bit higher if I was to ever get short. I want to get, you know, short at probably the market highs, the 69.50 level. And um, maybe if there was some sort of stop hunt around here as well, I might look to get short. Um, as far as long trades goes, uh, what else have we got here? Any new trades? Yeah, so we've got, I say new trades, but new zones. We've got some hidden demand there, right there. Sorry, let me delete that. And um, so if prices do come back down to this level here, you've got a decent buy trade. Prices making higher highs, higher lows. And then obviously, 
uh, prices come back into the higher low then this is where you want to be looking to buy the New Zealand dollar if not then you're buying the New Zealand dollar down in this confluence area here where you've got um, yeah a bit of confluence not fantastic but it's uh, it's there nevertheless let me draw it <clears throat> Got some uh, some confluence there with horizontal support and diagonal support. So moving on to the pound dollar, the pound dollar this week. Um, I think again, it's just, the pound has been rallying on um, Brexit sentiment. The Euro European Union agreeing um, <clears throat> an extension, um, but they require MPs to pass uh, um, uh, pass the bill in Theresa May's bill in um, in the vote next week. So um, with the extension and the probability of uh, you know a No Deal Brexit again not being on the table or if it's on the table then it's uh, less likely um the pound will always rally as long as there's a possibility of you know the uk um staying in europe but if the what i would say is that um if if if, if the vote if mps vote and uh they don't vote on theresa may's deal um you're probably gonna get a negative Reaction. Don't like necessarily that to predict, but that's what I probably would. Um, I would say, um, but there's an extension anyway, so um, let's see what happens. But I would probably say that that would cause a negative reaction and probably, you know, break through these uh, demand zones. This demand zone has been touched once, twice already. So um, with uh, with demand zones, and let's go to pound dollar. With demand zones. The more times they touch is the less reliable they are and more likely they are to break so if you touched once twice then this could also be you know um break through we've also touched this trend line once twice this is the third time as well so um from a from a support and demand zone perspective right and demand being there um it looks potentially ready to break again that's only from the technical perspective from a supply perspective um you've got you know lower highs lower lows being made again if uh we get Theresa may's deal um you know it gets voted in um in the european union get what they want then you will probably have a very sizable move to the upside um, based off of basically just a short term sentiment but once the dust settles the question you have to ask yourself is is the pound really the uh, currency to buy against the dollar <coughs> um, uh, personally I don't really think so but um, you definitely see a rally on uh, sentiment on the pound but again my bias is to short this pair um, but right now we're in a bit of no man's land. So again, I'd probably, you know, hold fire on this until, um, you know, the uh, the MPs vote. So moving on to the euro dollar. And the euro dollar this week managed to get short on this currency pair. I think everybody was waiting for uh, this level here. This level right here on a lower time frame. Um, managed to get in up here um, and then basically saw an entry and trade it actually back down um, still in this trade and the reason why again was pretty much even though the Fed was dovish um, on their assessment of interest rates you've got bigger problems in Europe so um, you know it's it's pretty much a no-brainer type trade I, I don't mind price you know coming up all the way and as a tip as well when you see prices come up into a level with no pullback so you've had one two three four five six seven eight nine days right and you've only had one day where you've had a negative day say negative but a, a bearish day potentially profit taking but overall this price action is straight up for over a week right 
you have to expect some sort of pullback so look at this you had you know one two three four five six seven bearish days and look at the price action and then you have to expect some sort of pullback or back to where we don't know but the longer prices go on is the more you have to expect the pullback prices pretty much touch this uh the top of this uh supply zone here the 1.14 uh, level so uh, once i've got an entry on the uh, four hour it was uh it was pretty much a done deal for me to get short um so let's look at that trade um, I'm going to delete this for now. I can delete this and delete this as well. Um, I'm going to put this demand zone here because we haven't cleared it yet. Kind of just spiked it. But the trade really was um, when prices came up into this area here, four hour time frame chart, something called the uh, two candle swing. And uh, this was pretty much the entry stop, about five pips above the high. No need for a for two candle swing. There's no need really for a uh, a big stop. And currently up the uh, was that one point seven six to one at the moment or thereabouts. In fact, matter of fact, I think I've got a, a, a better entry than that because as, as price pulled back, that's when I actually entered. I think it was the 1.1404 level. It was around here. So decent entry to the downside, looking to take profits probably at the bottom of this range. But I may hold as well, depending on obviously what happens in um, with Brexit, because if, again, we have any kind of shocks, we could see prices really kind of plummet, you know, down towards this 1.1 zero zero level which would represent a decent risk reward so um you know pretty much uh, all eyes on europe uh this week and the next trade which i also got into was the euro yen euro yen um this was a nice trade this was in fact a nicer uh, four five to one type trade at the moment so prices came up into this level Again, look at the way prices actually um, approach this level. So you've got a big move down into the demand zone, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days with no pullback. And then the ninth day, this is where um, we we've been watching this zone um, in the uh, uh, with the members, and uh, we pretty much just uh, entered right here. I'll show you the entry. on the euro yen it's euro yen it's nice outside candle also known what i call a capture pain candle um i think this pair i did do a bit bigger stop i think it was about 10 pips above um so again this was at the moment we're up uh 4.2721 at the moment and if risk continues to be off then you're probably expecting the Japanese yen to strengthen uncertainty in the market and uh, this looks like a very decent trade at the moment so again look at the uh, price action supply zone um, this is also a, a retracement CPR zone for those of you that have taken the CPR course as well, which I'm not going to really have to go into. But um, we had lots of confluence, lots of confluence from a from a sentiment perspective, fundamental perspective. Um, the yen has been doing okay, and um, when once sentiment kicked in, you know it was uh, pretty much game over for the uh, for the euro. Technically, I like this as well, um, and it was a good. Uh, uh, trade at the moment so um right now you could look for some buy trades um but probably um again you'd have to wait for risk on to come back in if the euro uh, does agree a deal with the uk you can probably expect the euro to definitely rally um if you're looking for a sell trade pretty the higher end of this 
of this supply zone um, is probably the best trade that you can uh, that you can probably take. So fresher level of supply. Um, that's about it though for now. Moving on to the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar. We'll zoom in a little bit. <coughs> Last week there was a bit of a sell off at that supply zone and then we had some dovish comments obviously from the Fed <coughs> and then uh, we ended up selling off again with the US dollar probably more benefiting from a risk off environment than the Australian dollar you're starting to see the uh, the, uh, the the sell off from this supply zone from this 0 0.716 level so if you go to the charts let's uh, get rid of that and I think I'm going to leave everything as it is no actually I'm not I'll put that there so you could look for um, buying opportunity at the moment if you want to probably extend this support and resistance zone up towards there in confluence with demand demand zone so that would be where you'd be looking for any kind of uh, uh, buy trades at the moment but I think in a risk off environment the dollar the US dollar does uh, do better so um, um, don't know whether you'd want to get involved in that um, if you are looking to pretty short this currency pair then you'd be looking for price to really come back up to this fresher area of supply up here or further higher if you are looking to buy and that level does doesn't hold as far as this level here this price then you're looking at probably this area of um, uh, uh, support within this larger demand zone so um, last pair is going to be the Australian dollar Japanese yen and again I like to watch this pair, let's trade this pair as well, but um, the risk off sentiment, if you're uh, looking at trying to gauge risk off or risk on sentiment, this is the pair to watch, because if it's risk on, Australian dollar will do well, if it's risk off, the Japanese yen will do well. So you can see basically what's happened this week. And we've touched this demand zone several times, you know, we've got move up one two coming down into the zone now um, I don't expect this level to hold might get a pullback and probably do something like that but um, in general if again risk risk being off probably looking at um, you know any kind of sell trades <coughs> so if you're looking to sell then I would probably uh, put a supply zone right there Lower highs, lower lows being made. Supply zone right there. Um, and then wait for a pullback into that area there or that higher supply zone before looking to get short. So you'd be looking for price to come up here and then look for a short trade. If you're looking for a long, um, you might probably want to wait for price to come down to this further 75, 80, uh, 90 um, or 76 round number for looking at any buy trades but again just ensure that risk is on and ensuring risk is on you know look for confluences in the stock market as well right the stock market indices like the s p 500 um you know will tell you will tell you if risk is on or risk is off and also you know the bond market as well um us treasury bonds and uh things like gold as well and um and silver as their safe haven assets so that brings us to the end of this week's analysis. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you enjoy the analysis. Any questions you have, um, just put them in the description box below if you're watching this on YouTube or you can email me at info at trading180.com. Hope you have a great trading week and guys, take care.